Oh, microphone. I'm gonna need the microphone. All right, there we are. So, greetings, folks. I'm Danny Workrides. Welcome to the shop. And uh, we are actually not doing this. The hated ugly bookshelf. That's just gonna stay put for for the time being. Um, so I'm gonna take some time today and do some improvements on the shop. Get some more tool holders on that wall there, I think. That's the plan anyway. That may or may not work out as I intended. But yeah, I just got way too much stuff on my bench still. Don't need screws. But I spent a good about uh, amount of the weekend just organizing the shop a little bit because it's uh, it's quite a mess. Um, got some leather pads on the bottom of my holdfasts now. So the big holdfast didn't have anything on it previously. And one of the smaller holdfasts, they both have leather on them. But I used like a, a spray adhesive, I think, and that just didn't last. Um, so yeah, went to five minute epoxy. That seems to be doing a bit better. All right, I'm taking the hardware off the bench because I don't need it at the moment. So yeah, unfortunately, I'm just doing a bit of shop organization at the moment. So. Nothing too terribly exciting. Just yet, anyway. May make it exciting later. But I would like to maybe find a spot for these. A spot for this guy. And also I have ambitions to put my planes up there, so but that's gonna be a bit more involved, I believe. Trying to get this to a spot where I can see what's going on. kind of damage can we do? I think the uh, the mallet holder is going to be probably the easiest thing to tackle. I'm still not quite sure how I want to do a plane till, although that's, uh, that's going to be something kind of uh, pertinent to me. Um, the drills they do take up a lot of room, so it would make sense to uh, to get those up and out of here. I got some scrap two by fours that I think I can employ for such a task. They don't need to be too terribly long, about like that. So we'll call that uh, maybe six inches. Oh my, yeah, uh, six inches. And we'll need a tenon, so that would be seven inches. And then we need to something to mortise them into. How would I want to do that? So the tenon would have to go kind of with the grain. I couldn't do it cross grain like that. 
That just wouldn't work too well. I know this because I've tried it before and it didn't work too well. Um, hmm. The other thing I could do is maybe like a double tenon. Cut two tenons in the back there and then cut two tenons alongside. That that would probably do the trick. Alright, let's see. How long of a board do I need? Let's go ahead and get a angle of the bench. Okay, um, the thing is I don't want that knot there. That's kind of a nasty knot. There we go. Uh, that's much, much better. Alright, let's go ahead and get this trued up. We can do that. Get these guys maybe out of the way over here on the side. I'll, I'll need them later for measuring against. This is probably due for sharpening. Good morning, whoever's viewing. Welcome to the shop. Sorry I can't see your name right off. If you want to say hi, I will say hi back. Because I'm polite like that. I'm not sure what you've cut so far, but uh, I'm in the process of making a till for my electric drills. I may need to take this to the diamonds, I've been neglecting it. Yeah, let's take it to the fine stone at least.
go. Nice and sharp. This grain is relatively flat, but it's sloping slightly this way. So this way, I shall go. Yeah, that's way too much bite to back her off. I just need this relatively flat. Doesn't need to be perfect. But you know, I want it to be smooth and I want to have a good face to reference off of to square off the edges. I'm a little high on this corner. I'm going to call that good enough. And the back, I definitely don't need parallel. Ooh, got the makings of a nut here. Which is not my favorite thing. But my plate is sharp, blade is sharp, and uh, got a relatively closed mouth, really tight mouth on it. So, this plane can handle some, uh, some wonky grain a bit. It just doesn't do. Uh, really massive cuts now let's see how square we might be really high on the right yeah, mostly just towards the back it's so 
So I got to take off there, a lot there. And it's still high over here too. Smoothing pass, another smoothing pass, check it again. Close enough for the work I'm doing. I don't even need to bother with this face. But um, the back side, I'm going to mess with a little bit just to get it uh, smooth. It doesn't need to be parallel, just smooth, because I'm going to be um, gluing a cleat to the back of it. And oh boy, that is not something I like to see when planes are involved. The staple right here. That would have been a very bad day. Got another one in the end grain here. <sighs> How am I going to get that out? Not getting any purchase with the pliers. Maybe when all. Maybe going a bit against the grain. See here momentarily. our mounting service. All right, um, so I'm not going to do anything for the batteries, I don't think. Um, well, do I want to? Okay, so if I got that mounted there, yeah, there's not going to be really any room for batteries unless I build up uh, additional structure, which is slightly tempting. Mm. All right, I gotta open up the garage door with some ventilation in here. So apologies for the noise. I'll go ahead and set this aside for now. And neighbors are mowing. Not a day goes by when someone isn't mowing in this neighborhood. Pfft. 
some more staples. Let's see them straight. Straight enough. Okay, what I could do is just a little bit of a riser on here. That will give enough space for clearance for the batteries and whatnot. And then put a shelf on top and just simply glue that. That might work. Now let's go ahead and get those strips cut out. And we said we want about seven inches, right? So we can have about a one inch tenon. Do I really want to do a double tenon? I think that might be overly ambitious. Yeah, that that's more work than I want to do today. Um, hmm. Could do like a sliding dovetail. That might make more sense. I've never attempted that before. Well, you know what? Let's experiment. Um, yeah. Sliding dovetail seems like it might be a bit simpler than um, the double tenon. Let's go ahead and get out our shooting board. Um, where did we hide that? Sharpen up 62. So it's been a minute since I've sharpened this guy. something flying in my bushes over there. See how we look.
in one of those tiny little brass hammers. I don't know why I'm doing this first, it just seemed like fun. Check for square. We are not even remotely square, so. I need to take off more from the bottom, less from the top. You know what, let's, let's uh, flatten the face first, that makes more sense. I just really felt like getting the shooting board out for some reason. Wherever you are out in TV land, I can't see your name yet. But if you want to say hi, I'll say hi back. I've got nobody else watching. So you have my un my totally devoted attention. A little bit higher on the right. That is most certainly close enough. I'm going to need to establish some sort of depth, but let's go ahead and mark this. Why did I want to? Oh yeah, because I wanted to cut these to length. So we want to get a flush edge so that we can measure off of it. And that's close enough to square. I'm 
not going to get two boards out of this. I've got plenty. Pretty sure I do anyway. That's seven inches. That'll give me a six inch beam, six inch post, and a one inch tenon. That is the plan anyway. Should have gone for the chisel holder. I would have been done by the end of the stream. What is up here? That's some kind of buildup. It was rather warm today. myself a line to follow down the edge. tensions in the wood. I don't need this piece, so. It's pinching a little bit, pinching the blade. is to uh, the plates not or plates not broad enough I'm getting the spine caught in there this is not a great solution but it will do in a pinch yeah I got a little bit broken off there Okay, and I decided to do what? A sliding dovetail? Yeah, that might be a dumb idea.
Now, I've done double mortise and tenon before like on this bench. It didn't turn out great and it took a long time. I may be able to pull it off. All right, let's uh, let's get this a bit more square. Um, get out some marking gauges. I just want to take off the bull nose, really. I'm fairly confident that dripping sweat all over this workpiece is not going to be any good for it. It's hard to tell which direction I want to go with the grain. I think I'll try it this way first. Seems to work. Definitely want to keep this edge sharp. <sighs> Definitely not going with this this style of ice with my next bench. Leg vice, I think, is the right way to go. For me, anyway. I do want to make a plain till for back there. But I'm thinking right now, because it would be a lot easier um, to just make uh, small holders for my uh, joinery planes. So the, the combination plane, the router plane. I got sawdust in here. I do. See if I can find maybe a little brush to clean that out. And don't worry, this is a nylon brush, not brass or steel or anything like that. But yeah, with the with like the 45 and the 
was that the 78 rabbit plane I could just do the little one-off pieces uh, to hold the single planes <coughs> be really more like shelves than a, than a plane tilt I could get those out from under the bench I do need to take a little bit heavier on the right. That's a bit too fine of a cut. And this one, well, I don't really care about it being flat, just want it to be parallel. Just get down to the line and stop. That's the name of the game here. This face is a bit out of parallel as well. So, get, get another marking gauge. And you know what? That needs to be sharper. make myself a little jig here and I need to hammer this in just a little bit more
That worked better than I expected. Okay. And I don't actually want this to be round. I think I'm going to go for more of a square shape. Well, square shape would be ideal anyway, but I may not get there. Just so long as it's sharp and it's got a point to it. Can I take this off? pretty tight. A small secondary bubble. I think that's about all I need to do, really. I'm not going to put it in on the fine stones. So I just don't think it calls for it. And this one could protrude a little bit further too, I think. Welcome viewer number two. I don't know who you are. If you say hi, I'll say hello. can't see uh, who's in chat, unfortunately, with the software I'm using. Maybe someday I'll get to, uh, get to a point where I can do that, but right now I'm using uh, mobile apps. So I got a tablet there, I got a cell phone there, I got a cell phone up there. That's how I roll. Because that's the equipment I have and I'm too cheap to buy anything else right now. Not until this channel starts making some money. Except I, uh, I did get a, a USB extension cable. It's on, uh, on order from Amazon. So I got a, a webcam and 
uh, a laptop that I'm going to try and bring out here. I just got to uh, make sure I'm keeping it safe from dust. So I do not want to ruin my brand new laptop. But yeah, that uh, that webcam should give me a bit of a um, nicer picture, and it'll also allow me to use uh, OBS, which is going to be a little bit easier to control and have some nicer features going on. Because the Streamlabs app, although it's it's pretty nice and uh, works pretty dang good, the OBS does work better. All right, there's four sides. So this needs to go into this. Sliding dovetail or double mortise and tenon. I'm going to try the sliding dovetail. Um, Which do I cut first?
Did say an inch, didn't I? Okay, so one inch. About like that. Oh. And that still gives me six inches. Like so. Make sure this is square. It is not. Back to the shooting board. Let's try this again. I'm gonna have to go off this side now. Well, uh, I still should go off this side. First, make sure we're actually square. Pretty square. All right, let's see if we can uh, cut this like a dovetail. Distracted bull, hey, thanks for the follow. Didn't I see you on, uh, on uh, Clint Stream Timber? Nice kerf. Tilt it slightly so we can go straight down. Probably uh, 
watching us both. That's uh, that's dedication right there. I have hard enough time watching one stream at a time. I probably should have stayed on his stream to actually learn how to do sliding dovetails because I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I've maybe seen it once or twice online, but I've never actually attempted this myself. kind of like a kerf. definitely wider on uh, one side than it is on the other. And I've heard that uh, you actually want to do that because um, you make it uh, narrower on the inside or the beginning of, this, of where you're sliding it and then it tightens up as you push it in. Yeah, well, uh, practicing is pretty much what I'm doing right now. Um, so this is just a kind of unimportant piece. This is um, a hanger for my electric drills. So if it's all wonky and, and messed up, that shouldn't really matter all that much. I know I ought to be using my crosscut saw for this part, but I have this weird thing where I have to cut every part of the dovetail with the dovetail saw. I was thinking of doing um, double mortise and tenon on it, but that just seemed like it would take too long. This seemed a little bit easier for some reason. Except for the part where it's not letting go. And I've got uh, one way lower than the other. Not my proudest moment here. All right. To be quite honest, I think the end result here is going to be scrapping the entire piece. But that's okay, because it was scrap wood anyway. 
All right, which of these is thicker? Get my calipers out. I do own calipers, don't I? Okay, so we're thicker on this side than that side. Go this way. That way I can lay it across the uh, the bench. Let's get it nice and flush. That looks good. Yeah, I, I am primarily hand tools. I don't object to occasionally using the table saw or the power drills or the um, uh, pneumatic nailers but that's mostly for uh, projects that I don't care about for uh, you know for the stuff that I want to actually show off pretty much everything is hand tools Okay. So I got the, the receiving end there marked out. And hand tools are just a lot more fun. Not a great way of doing this, but I don't have any surface area on the other side to register off of. Okay. Well, it's, it's uh, not only for me are they more fun, but I get more of a sense of accomplishment when I use hand tools. You know, I, I, I feel like I'm employing a skill. And this is not to say that power tool woodworkers are not skillful. Obviously, they are. But uh, it's not, I made a machine do this. It's, I... I did this with my own bare hands kind of accomplishment. So it's a, it, it, it requires a different sort of um, skill, you know, it's, it's not so much mental and calculating, it's it's uh it, it it is a little bit mental but it's it's also quite a bit of dexterity required so that's uh that's why i like them better when i actually started woodworking i had no intention of using hand tools um it's actually uh 
Matthias Wandel who got me uh, down that the whole rabbit hole of it, um, and it was uh, his his screw advanced box joint jig. That guy is just amazing what he can do. Um, but the thing is, I couldn't afford a jointer. So I got a number five plane and watched some Christopher Swars videos. And uh, planing stuff by hand got me hooked. And then I found Paul Sellers and, you know, watching the hand fit dovetails. It's like you, you can't. You can't stop after that. And actually, this doesn't go all the way, does it? Well, you know what's going all the way now. I'm not about to attempt a stuffed sliding dovetail. Well, uh, one of the great things about hand tools, though, is you can uh, you can do a lot of the work with the kids in the shop. You don't have all the safety concerns you would have with the power tools. If they are so inclined, that is. But yeah, I do understand that. Uh, this is a, a very time intensive way of doing things. Yeah, well, it's um, it's weird what age will do, because I had absolutely no interest in woodworking at all until about uh, four years ago, and yeah, once once I started, it uh, it just didn't stop. Let's do this. Just make a relief cut straight down the middle. Um, I got into woodworking because the wife wanted, uh, um, laundry organizing shelves and started looking for for better ways to do it and because uh, it was pretty much just you know butt joints and everything nailed together 
um, and everything was wobbly and I couldn't figure it out and I just didn't really understand it. And then I started, you know, when I started learning about proper joinery, you know, starting with box joints, um, it, uh, it appealed to my, my sense of, um, well, let's just call it hacking. Because that's, uh, honestly, if I, I'm, I'm really into coding, you know, scripting, uh, I'm, I'm going to be a computer science major here in the fall, and uh, it's the same sort of principle of taking something and using it in a way it really wasn't designed to. You're kind of exploiting the uh, innate features of it. Um, and that's that's essentially how I look at joinery is you're you're kind of exploiting this tree, making it flat and you know exploiting the way the grain works in order to you know make something functional and useful to you. But certainly not a tree as it was originally designed. But yeah, once I once I found uh, Matthias Wandel, it was all over from there. I started out with. Uh, I had like the little Ryobi table saw and you know the the Ryobi battery operated tools upgraded to this uh, Delta that I've got over there because it was the cheapest thing I could find that would actually take a dado stack. Like I said, I couldn't afford a afford a jointer, so I started getting into hand planes. And built up quite a collection over of those in just a few years. half at a time. I think that's probably smarter. Again, maybe not. fairly close to depth. I think I will try and finish this out with the router plane. Yeah, over the years I've actually had uh, two craftsman table saws and I think I'm on my third miter saw. Eventually, uh, you start to learn that uh, you don't want to necessarily start out with the cheap equipment.
and I got uh, between uh, you know for for most people who are doing like uh, construction st style stuff uh, you know table saw and compound miter saw is going to get them through most of everything you know circular saw would be a good one too but uh, you're, you're spending at least 300 bucks for those I can do everything those can do with these two and these were free got them from my grandfather Plus, you can do a lot of things that you can't do without, say, a bandsaw. Yeah, I, I'm still fairly content with my table saw. I know it's not uh, not the greatest example, but you know, it it does. Uh, I can do a half inch data with it. And uh, pretty much takes care of my needs. And Timber is raiding me with a party of 14. Well, thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. Timber has uh, actually, Clint has inspired me to try my hand at sliding dovetails. This project might not actually be completed, but uh, the intended result is going to be a hanger for my electric drills. friend the 71 Rose Bitter is now following me how was uh, how was your dental appointment did he have a habit of causing things pain that was you wasn't it Rose or am I mistaking you for somebody else <laughs> you ever watch those uh, videos where the kids get their wisdom teeth pulled and they, they come out of the uh, of the surgery and they're all wonky? One of my favorites is the the girl who has the chocolate mousse ice cream. Her mom got her some chocolate mousse ice cream. She's like, it's like you want me to eat a mousse? I found that quite hilarious anyway. See if I can get enough depth on here. Maybe. We might be deep enough. Ah. Craig, you don't have to follow me just because I beat you in the tournament. But thank you all the same. Now, last time I got my wisdom teeth uh, removed, they they had to take me out the back because I was embarrassing everyone. Good morning, Kilroy. And yeah, I hope I haven't missed anybody's comments. I don't really have a great setup to uh, to watch chat, unfortunately. But usually it's not a problem because nobody talks to me in this thing. Oh, you're winning again now? That's okay. I just wanted to... Uh, who was it? Dirk I needed to avenge? Kilroy, thanks for the follow. Thank you, Timber. Uh, good luck with your chauffeuring. This is probably actually going to be thrown away. And 
No Kuthor boundaries. That's that's how I'm pronouncing it. No Kuthor boundaries. I'm just gonna call you boundaries if that's okay. Thank you for the follow. This is the most new follows I've had in a month. Trying to trying to get to affiliate, so maybe I can start getting some of that Twitch money and uh, get some better camera equipment, maybe some better lighting, better audio, and then maybe maybe someday start looking at some nicer tools. Pay no attention to the Lee Nielsen router plane. That's that's a little bit of an exception. I love this thing. This is an essential piece in everybody's shop. I don't care if you're a hand tool woodworker or a power tool woodworker. You need a you need a router plane. What I'm building boundaries is a um, a rack for my electric drills and electric screwdrivers. And more or less, it's an excuse right now to attempt to do um, sliding dovetails, which is a novelty for me. So um, I'm going to do a bunch of these and drills will hang off of it, if that makes any sense. It's probably going to end up as a miserable failure, but uh, we gotta learn somehow, right? And this seemed like a perfect opportunity. Yeah, um, this is the only piece of Lee Nielsen kit I have. I was, uh, there aren't a whole lot of options when it comes to router planes. You can either get the Lee Nielsen, you can get the Veritas, which is pretty much the same price, or you could get an Antique Stanley, which is the same price. So I went with Lee Nielsen. Most, most of my other tools are not quite this fancy. Got a, uh, I've got three Wood River planes. I've got um, a couple Stanleys. Um, I've got a record number seven. And uh, well, a number four of unknown make. But uh, that was Granddad, so. That's, that's still one of my favorites. This is uh, one of my first planes. That was in Granddad's toolbox. So I cleaned it up, put a new coat of paint on it. Yeah, I, I was thinking about doing the, um, what are they called, the, the old hag's tooth? by doing the uh, grinding up the uh, Allen wrench. But it turned out I didn't need to because I managed to stumble across um, a, a 271 on Craigslist and I got this for my birthday. All right, can we get any lower? Yeah, unfortunately for me, Granddad wasn't much of a woodworker. He was um, he was a machinist and an engineer by trade. But uh, just a scary individual who could pretty much do anything with anything. His project when he retired was building himself a lake. So he got some land down in southern Alabama with a little creek running through it. Bought himself a backhoe and uh, 
dug out a lake, dammed up the creek. And as a result of that, someday I'm probably going to inherit lake for lakefront property. Okay, is my yep, my camera's frozen up there. Well let's uh let's do a little switcheroo. If you can bear with me just a moment. Okay, so we got the camera in the corner over there now. I just like to have a kind of a wider angle to uh, let everybody see where I'm going so you're not just seeing the close-up, you can kind of see what's going on in the rest of the shop too. Not that there is much going on in the rest of the shop, but um, yeah, so overhead camera, that's uh, an old Nexus cell phone. And it tends to overheat when it's way up there by the ceiling. And when it overheats, it shuts off. My grandfather worked for, um, I think, Lockheed, but he was doing a lot of uh, a lot of secret stuff that he couldn't actually tell us about. But definitely one of the smartest men I ever knew. And it is a beautiful lake. I haven't been there in a little bit, but uh, I promise to keep an eye on it for my mom since my family lives in California. And I'm pretty much the only one in Alabama. Yeah, well, he, he was doing a lot of fun stuff. Uh, got out of the Navy for medical discharge, got, uh, got some education benefits, studied being an engineer. He uh, used to be able to come quite a long way. He started off driving a logging truck. Which, when I was a kid, those were the stories I was a lot more interested in. Engineering stories, not so much. Experience with Lockheed, although they, they did help us uh, fix our Humvees over in Bosnia for some reason. Any uh, any veterans in chat today? Or just me? Take that silence as a no. If you uh, if you happen to catch any of the news though of the of the recent conflicts, you might have uh, caught wind of some of the. Yeah, Camel Joe, thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by. By the way, um, if you're familiar with the up armored Humvees, the uh, the eleven fourteens and such. Uh, in Bosnia, we had the XM-1114, so they were still experimental uh, when I was using them. Awesome. 
I should have seen that coming. <laughs> well, folks, don't say I didn't warn you. This was a distinct possibility when we started this. Ah. Uh, Well, don't take it too personally, Rose. About, uh, I'd say about 60-some uh, percent of, of the population is not qualified for military service. So it's, uh, it's not saying uh, it doesn't reflect negatively on you if you're, if you're not qualified. Uh, no, this, this, uh, this was the exploding dovetail. Uh, a, a, a distant cousin of the sliding dovetail. <laughs> Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's try something different. Because <laughs> I think um, that's probably not going to happen for us today. Um, it's uh, 1240. You know what, I can go a bit longer. Let's see, let's make something quite a bit simpler. Let's go for a hanger for our mallet, because I don't have one of those and it's taking up a lot of space on the bench. Put the chisels away for now. Put the 62 away, won't need that anytime soon. Dovetail marker, don't need that. Don't need the shooting. Let's make as much noise as possible. No, no, I'm done practicing. So I'm, I'm going to try something different. Let's get out some red oak. And that grain looks relatively straight. Got a little brush around here somewhere. Where did you go, little brush? Keep the sawdust from denting the wood. I already actually scored this one because I was going to use it for something else. But now this is going to be dowels. I'm making the dowels first just to uh, see how much, uh, see how wide they're going to be before I cut the boards. And um, this, this red oak I got from Home Depot, but uh, I, I recently found a, hold on a second, butterfly. Take a look, it's in a book. Wait, no. Uh, there's a sawmill about 30 minutes north of me that's uh, got some really good deals, so I'm going there from now on. But this is leftover. Uh, I bought this mostly for um, the French cleats back there. So if you look back at some of my uh, some of my older stuff, um, I was doing a stream where I was making a spice rack, and that spice rack, the poplar I got from there was uh, from the sawmill. That's about uh, three bucks a board foot, so yeah, Home Depot certainly can't beat that. All 
All right, now the trick for dowel making, or at least one of the tricks I've learned, is you have to follow the grain with it. And so, rather than, say, sawing this, we're going to split it. I'm going to go a little bit over three-quarter of an inch here, just to see what the grain's doing. Yep. That's probably not going to be a dowel. There's one. We need at least two. You know, well, one of the big disadvantages of the mill, lumber mill is uh, you, you have to actually flatten everything out. So I spent about three or four streams just getting everything jointed and, and, and planed and thicknessed. And it was a, that was a lot of work. Built up quite a sweat. just to see where this is going to go. Let's take a, about a sixteenth off the edge. There we go. These are about three quarters, so I got five good blanks here for dowels. That means I've got um, enough dowels, possibly. I'm moving the camera here so we can get uh, a little bit of a different view. Well, maybe. Maybe we're moving the camera. Is this, can we see over here? Okay. This is kind of a... I did make a mistake when, when setting up my bench. Um, I had, I bored uh, 15 16 holes for the hold fast and I bored three quarter holes over here by the uh, bench for the bench dogs or by the vise for the bench dogs. And then I got like a, you know, seven eighths diameter uh, hold fast. That was a lot bigger. So I had to do a seven eighths hole here at least something like seven eighths. Um, so yeah, I've got one really big hold fast hole right there. But that's uh, that's what I use for, for the dowel plate too. So it's, um, it comes in handy for that. Not quite. Okay, let's, uh, there's gotta be a better way of doing this. Let's see, just, just, just. And, there we go. Yeah, that's, that's more like it. For this, I'm going to need the big mallet. And just to save your ears, I'm going to turn the microphone around. This may not work terribly well. Whew. 
This is a workout, folks. Now, that was fairly rough. Let's see if I can uh, clean it up by putting it through the next diameter. Yeah, it looks like the grain just isn't straight enough. Um, this mallet is maple and walnut. So uh, I, actually, if you if you look at my YouTube channel, um, I've got a video about a year ago when I made this. Uh, kind of went over the entire process of it. Yeah, but it's just a simple friction fit. Um, two pieces, three quarter maple laminated. Uh, same for the handle and walnut on the outside. And hopefully I'm not scaring anybody away with all this noise. I know it's quite a racket. But it looks like uh, that's about as clean as I'm going to be able to get it without uh, sanding or something like that. Which I may or may not decide to do. <clears throat> if nothing else, this is a real good forearm workout. And I apologize, folks. I'm going to have to take a quick break and grab something to drink. This is really hot out here. And there's the postal carrier. Today's stream is not at all sponsored by Sprite. Whew. It's gonna be hot today.
Uh, actually, uh, stream's running a bit longer than I normally would do, so most days I'd cut it off right about now, but I want to get something done, you know? So let's, let's make one more dowel, and then we'll start getting towards the chisel holder. Sorry about the noise. Let's move the microphone the other way. Came out fairly nice. Let's get it downsized once more. Alright, so I've got two dowels, and I just need to figure out what I use to bore that hole. Let's see, I've got, uh, I've got scrap everywhere. Here's some scrap. this bit works. That's a good fit. Hello, Dirk Plug, how you doing? You just joining us now? Weren't part of the raid, I take it? You're paying me a visit because I defended your honor against uh, Craig? thing I need is some oak. Okay, I have some oak. I don't need a whole lot. Just enough to hold the hammer. Dirk, thanks for the follow. No, no, we don't. Uh, we don't do any milling here. We we get it from the mill, or we get it from the home desk spot, and uh, we just take it from there. Pretty much the worst I'm going to do is some thickness planing. 
Okay, so. And go about that far. And. Yeah. Okay, I'll cut them about that knot, I think. That should be sufficient. And. This one doesn't have to be too terribly pretty, so we're not uh, we're not caring too much about accuracy, but we do want to get it close. Yeah, believe it or not, there's plenty of full-grown trees that people are trying to give away, but uh, you know, without a sawmill, that's just not something I'm ready to tackle. have on occasion entertained the idea of getting a sawmill but that's that's a bit more work than I want to do sorry I had the microphone turned around you couldn't hear me so we know so we're square along the edge too give us something to follow on that end this is not an enormous plank this is a standard length it's a little thicker than you might normally get, but... I don't know how large you are, so I can't really uh, can't really judge that too easily. But it's it's not at all uncommon to buy lengths of lumber that are uh, you know six, eight, ten feet long. Uh, just wish I wasn't sweating all over it. Okay. So, what I need is a little bit of an angle, so um, let's do this, I think I want to go about, about like that, let's get the camera pointed over closer to the vise. So, I'm going to want something around about there and round about there. Let's actually do something square across. Okay. And get this in the vise. And now, once that's flush, we'll get out the bevel gauge. Just to Guide our angle, and I think about like that. That should be good for hanging a hammer. Roughly centered.
And the unfortunate part about, uh, about doing it this way is when you go at an angle, you're, you're likely to get the spurs on the edge to break out of the end before the, the snail does. Or at least close to the same time. So you do have to be uh, careful of that. But going at a lower angle like this, you reduce that risk a bit. And I think that might do it. Um, little debate here. Well, thanks for stopping by, Kilroy. Uh, lurking is fine. I think lurking is the norm for my channel. Okay, so I've got a flat bottom, and I could go all the way through and then do like a wedge, but I think I'm just going to keep it uh, keep it stopped uh, where it is, and just let friction and glue hold it together. So I don't know if we can see, but uh, got a little bit of a stop right there, and it hasn't protruded out the back yet. And double check to make sure these fit. That one fits. And that one fits. Not exactly the angle I would have liked. Okay, uh, let's clean these up just a little bit. I think I might have some abrasive paper around about here somewhere. Let's go with the 60 grit. That's wet dry. I don't want to waste that. Start with a 60, then maybe 120, 150, something like that. I don't want this to be necessarily completely smooth or anything like that. I just don't want to get splinters off of it. close enough. It is just shop furniture after all. tear out right there.
I guess when you're doing a, a dowel plate, you really need to do straight grain. Which I just haven't been able to find yet. Of course, I've only been using the Home Depot lumber, so that could explain it. A month or so ago, I was doing the uh, the two by four challenge for my local club, and did uh, throw the camera around. If you can see way back there, made a coat rack out of a two by four. Yeah, the uh, Gilroy the the lurk command does not work here. I don't have any uh, I don't have any commands set up. In fact, I've actually blocked commands where I where I see them over there. Um, so all that fancy stuff, I don't do song requests, I don't do anything like that. Thought about doing song requests, but that's going to be mostly me playing guitar. And uh, I'm not bringing my guitar out to the shop, so. If you want to catch me on a gaming stream, I might do song requests. Okay. I think that's about where I want this. So how long do I want this? I want it to come past. So we'll go about there, I'd say. And this one. I'm just kind of eyeballing it right here. So nothing too exact. this long enough to get positive cooking on the uh, on the mallet. I wonder, is this actually going to be wide enough for this guy? Yeah, that'll work too. So I could use it for either mallet. I'm probably going to do a little bit of a bigger one for the monster mallet there. Okay, and how do I want to cut you? <sighs> you know what? Let's just let's just do this the the way that I know I can't possibly screw it up. Or maybe I can screw it up this way. Dang it. There's just not a good way of doing this, is there? No, nope, that's not gonna work. Chat, I am open to suggestions. Help me out. Am I back? Not sure if I missed anything. My screen froze, so I, I imagine everything froze for you guys. Okay. That's good. Thank you, Rose. It's, uh, it's a little bit difficult to tell what's going on for me. I don't have everything on a screen right in front of me. I got to, this is where I'm broadcasting over here on this, on this cell phone, and I'm reading chat over here on this tablet, so. X-ray, that's a very good suggestion. Unfortunately, I've already ignored it. <laughs> I 
Uh, unfortunately seeing any suggestions because everything had frozen so I just went on with whatever I could think of and it worked it's not the prettiest but it worked and it's turning better than my sliding dovetail did turning out better tooth. Okay. These are just going to go like that and hammer. Okay, so next thing I got to do is get the French cleat on the back. Fortunately, I have quite a bit of pre-cut French cleat still. This is an off-cut from uh, what I have on the wall. I may or may not be back depending on how long it takes your machine to reboot. May or may not be here when you get back. Let's see, in the stream so far, I've had to restart the stream once. I've lost one of my cameras. And I've completely destroyed my attempt at a sliding dovetail. A productive stream, no doubt. I got a ton of new followers, so thanks all for coming. <laughs> if, if you haven't noticed by now, this is the Novice Woodworking Channel. Alright, so... That's not good, we don't want stickers. This is not a proper use of a chisel. But these are the cheap chisels that I don't really care about, so it's okay. AMC Carver 1, thank you for the follow. Well, I do appreciate that. How far along am I? 
Am I seriously at 24 followers now? That's uh, that is awesome. <sighs> Guess that's what I get for uh, trolling timber anew with all my bizarre song requests. Let's get some chamfers on here before we get too far and glue up everything. The first time I was on uh, Clint's stream, saw the uh, he was playing all that music. I told him he should play some Steely Dan, and told me about the song request. It's like, oh, oh, I, I can request songs, and you can you'll play them without without actually vetting them. It's like, okay, let me introduce you to Big Bertha, the truck driving queen. Never, never leave me in charge of the jukebox, folks. I will deliberately disappoint you every single time. All right, some type bond number two. That's my favorite type bond. All right, get a squishy, squishy. My new favorite type of clamp, the spring clamp. Been finding more and more uses for these every day. And this is why you keep shavings around. Clean up your squeeze out. All right, and then we got Dowels, these need to be glued in. For my uh, for my coat rack, I actually did wedges in the dowel, so I cut like a, a slight kerf in there, put them all the way through, and then hammered in a wedge. I was pretty pleased by that. Come on, what are we waiting for? Let's go. And orient these so they're facing up. And that needs more glue. There we go. There it is. The mallet holder. On a French cleat. And this is just going to hang up on the wall. Maybe about, yeah, probably over here. Something like that. I don't know. They're movable. That's part of the design. But we'll leave this overnight to cure and before we put too much strain on it. And yeah. But um, that does look like it's going to be it for me. I've got about uh, I've got about half an hour over my allotted time schedule, and I'm not the only one who needs the internet. So uh, I'm probably going to catch hell when I go inside. Um, I do appreciate all the new follows and everybody for joining me. Uh, it was a great time. Um, 
If you want to see any of my archives, uh, I got uh, stuff down below, all the links, uh, videos. I got a YouTube channel. Um, I actually have two YouTube channels. One's going to have the archives of these live streams. The other one's got more shorter form, more consumable stuff. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. I put a lot of stuff on there. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Facebook. I've even got a blog for some reason, which I hardly ever use, so don't uh, don't pay too much attention to that. But Instagram's a good place to follow me. Um, yeah. Again, uh, thanks to everybody for joining. I, I would raid somebody else, but uh, I don't know how to do that. Um, especially not from my phone. So, uh, yeah, regrettably, you're all going to have to find your own places to go from here. <laughs> thanks uh, again, especially to uh, Clint for the raid. Um, Y'all take care now. Bye.